Hello, I'm FK Exercise Cat and welcome back to the video. So if I were to ask you, is it possible to beat the Minecraft Ender Dragon without taking any damage? You'd probably answer, maybe? If you had the right gear, the right equipment, the right armor, the right everything else, you could probably do it with enough attempts. And this is something I just about agree with. If I took my existing survival world from all these years ago, I could probably eventually beat the dragon without taking any damage. But today I wanted to try not just to do that, but to try and beat the entirety of Minecraft without taking a single half heart damage. That's right, we're gonna be playing UHC Minecraft and not just UHC regular, UHC where we have a single half half point, any form of damage kills us, wipes us out from the game and we have to start again. It's going to be one of these challenges I imagine that frustrates and takes so much time but that's why I'm doing it, for your viewing pleasure. So I hope you will enjoy this attempt to beat Minecraft without any equipment from start to finish, from spawning in to the ender dragon and I guess we should just dive straight into this one. So as you can see we've turned off natural regeneration so there's no way to get my, you know, at things back. Basically that's playing with UHC and then also uh, what we've done is we've turned the difficulty to hard and we're going to be using a blank seed. Like all of these challenges it has to be an entirely random seed that no one has any knowledge of whatsoever. Uh, we're going to be starting into whatever game Minecraft gives me because I feel like that's the fairest way to do this. So let's see what we get. Okay, so we spawned in a mega tiger biome, which is kind of nice. A lot of people think this is one of the rarer biomes in the game. A lot of people really like it. That's kind of cool. And uh, I guess that's a promising start to the run because if we had bones, we could tame some dogs too. Okay, so you can see we're literally on half a heart. Anything will kill me instantly. And uh, you know, that plus the fact that in the description, you'll see the full, uh, you know, couple first step, couple hours of uh, raw gameplay. If you just wanna, you know, guarantee the extra step, this is legit. But trust me, I'm trying to do this with no damage whatsoever. And I know there are enough fake videos that you can, you know, kind of see that as a thing. But again, check the description or see the fact that I have half a heart. This is how we know it's going to be entirely no damage whatsoever. So I wanted to set down the ground rules right now as well, because if you wanna beat Minecraft without damage, you need to really clarify what does damage mean. So no damage whatsoever. Anything that can take half a heart or more of damage will count as damage. There is no healing. There is no totem of undying. I know technically it's kind of like not taking damage, but technically speaking, the totem of undying, in my opinion, counts as dying and then being brought back to life before it counts as a death. In my opinion, that counts as taking damage. So no healing potions, no totem of undying. Everything has to be done in the most cautious way possible because any form of damage, a straight arrow, uh, even falling more than three blocks at a time is instant death for me, which is cool on the one hand and also kind of scary on the other. So we're gonna use our starting map, which you get on Bedrock, to just kind of walk around here because I've got some wood. Now I want to go find a plains biome because any, any biome with tr uh, trees is a little bit more dangerous at night in my opinion. It's interesting because unlike previous runs where we're seeing if something is humanly possible, everyone knows this is possible. It just seems, uh, you know, ridiculously hard and unlikely to do. Oh, and I think it actually just might be because there is a ravine here and inside, the yep, it's a lava ravine. So if we need lava, this is gonna be our place. It's pretty safe because the lava lights it up. And yeah, as long as we come here during the daytime, we're gonna be good. Okay, I found a perfect place to set up as my base for now because it's perfectly flat. We can see everything for a very long distance around and we're gonna light it up. But yeah, we're gonna need an industrial number of torches to make this properly work. So I've also made myself this little safety box. This means that even if a mob does happen to stumble into the area, if I'm inside here, the mob won't be able to see me, at least without some doors which will be here, which should increase my safety even further. Oh, look at that skeleton over there. He's walking over here. Like he knows I'm over here. He doesn't, but it's scary. You can see what I mean, like accidentally just random things like that. You can get real scary real fast. It's like learning to clear a room in the military or something. What I'm basically saying is this- Oh god, there's a skeleton down there! This is basically the same as being in the military. It's, it's exactly what I'm saying. Well, you can get up to free wool per sheep, but apparently I just got one anyway. You know what? Didn't need to sleep tonight anyway, sheep. Oh, another thing that almost just killed me is there's some gravel in the ceiling right here. If gravel suffocates me, even for half a second, the run is over. I'm dead. It's all over like that. So that zombie actually survived the night because he's got a cap on, which means that I have to kill him, I guess. I'm going to make sure that... Okay, so yeah, we're going to be really, really careful about this. Again, it's a zombie. Usually you can be really safe with zombies, but just to be extra safe about this one. There we go. Oh, we even got the helmet. What is it? Aqua Affinity and Fawns. Fawns is worthless when you're not allowed to take damage, but Aqua Affinity genuinely might come in useful. It's like one of the better enchantments we could have gotten. So this is my paranoia mana so far. As you can see, I've got nice little view holes. I can check 
see if anything is trying to get me. Uh, but yeah, it's mostly just here, so I've got extra safety. Even though everything's lit up, something could walk up if I, you know, go AFK, then I, I just need to be sure that nothing will get me. So I guess the good news about this run so far is the fact that we have so much lava available. There's a lava pit over there, there's a lava pit over there, <laughs> there's a lava pit over there, and that's on top of the lava ravine we found earlier. Oh god, look how many spiders there is in that place. Oh, spider's gone free from the from the water trap. That is not a good sign for me. Oh god, that is not a good that is not a good thing. That is not a good thing. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. Oh, and there's just lava back there. Okay. Great. Just just perfect. Oh no! Ah! What killed me? What killed me there? Slain by spider? Ow! Oh no! So we're gonna try this one again, as you can see. Natural regeneration off, as you can see. Hard difficulty, and a blank seed. Let's see what we get this time. So, I mean, it's not a better spawn, but it's not a worse spawn, so that's that counts for something, at least. I knew this would be one that, like, couldn't be done on the first run. I just, like, knew it in my head. And I guess I proved that right, which is... You know, it's one of those things I hoped I'd be wrong about. Oh, oh! Pfft. <laughs> There was a tree above me. <laughs> okay, well, uh, let's let's try that one again. I found some lilac flowers over here, and I think I'm gonna take these for morale later on down the line because I can make some pink dye. I think it is. I swear, the entirety of the map we've explored so far has been all some form of forest, like tiger into regular forest into birch forest. A third as many. Ah, oh, what? Where? How? So this is a really odd spawn because it seems as though I've spawned next to a Mesa biome. And not just a Mesa biome, a Mesa Bryce biome with an exposed abandoned mineshaft and a desert temple. Again, you can check the footage if you think this is absurd, because I think it is too. I will be sharing the seed uh, in the video or in that video. Uh, but first of all, let's take the damage and then let's go explore that immediately. But there are sometimes chests found nearby, which can contain... I mean, golden apple is worthless, we can't use it. Oh god, there's literally a cave spider spawner there. What? How? What? How? Why? Why? We're gonna go inside here. We're gonna torch the place up as we go, just to be extra safe. Two bits of gold, and you know, I don't think this was a very successful one. Oh, some emeralds. Oh, and we, we forgot to prioritize food, which we desperately, desperately need. So this is a risk. It's a risk I would rather not take. I'm gonna go get it in the water. No, there's a drown down there. Drowned for as a trident, instantly over. So we're gonna use this daytime as an attempt to get the last bit of wool that we need, also to torch up the area, also to get enough food to guarantee that even in a big scarcity situation, we won't starve, which is a good thing in my opinion. No! Really, of all the ways a torch, there was a bit of loose sand that just fell right the way through the ground. Okay, so it looks like we're doing some form of survival island based challenge because there's a huge ocean over here. Or maybe it's just, oh, it looks like we're just, yeah, at the very edge of an ocean. So this actually was a fairly okay spawn for what we're trying to do. I don't think this is a good seed in general. I think it's a very plain and boring seed, but it has a plains biome next to the spawn. That's all we really need or want for this run. I really have a good feeling that this is gonna be the run, by the way. I don't even know why, but I'm just thinking, you know, what? I've had enough ridiculous failures that if we just stay focused the entire time, on an important task, because the important task is a certain number of ways of dying, which I'm always focused on. It's when I go off task, I'm like, oh, let's get some gold. I was gonna make a whole gold set of armor for fun. That's when I was placing the torches around. That's when I fell to my death. Oh, so as it turns out, this village has literally one of these torches. Usually there's a lot more than one. So we have three bits of wool, but they're different color. We need to find two ink sacks or one bone mill, or we can't turn it into a bed. Okay, we found a cave again. We're gonna be extra super, super cautious of this one. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna revisit the paranoia uh, factory idea from earlier, where we make sure that there's absolutely no way that something can be waiting for it when I get up here. Cause it's just, it's just an extra form of fear I'd rather not have in my life. It seems as though I found the bottom of an underwater cave of some form. It's odd because there's obsidian already in here, which uh, again, that's all. Oh. And we found a low x-ray glitch, apparently. Huh, odd. You can see a bunch of drowns over there. <laughs> that was a fun little fact for you. So that's a little bit scary. Sadly, there's no other structures anywhere nearby me. Oh! 
Okay, so this is what the seed looks like. It's a pretty interesting mixture of swamp and plains. Uh, again, I can't guarantee this will be great or not so great. Oh, and there's a village found to the south of spawn as well. Oh, and get this, it's not just one village near spawn, it's two, or at least one village and then a tiny mini village of just two houses, it seems. Well, I've got a lifetime supply of iron pickaxes and swords, apparently. We have torches, we have a bed. I'm feeling pretty positive about this run in general. Uh, this is a quick reminder, if you haven't already heard it, uh, but I leave the full first uh, several hours of gameplay. If you want to guarantee this was a legit random seed, you can see the game bullet tell me to complete, because I, I really do think this run's gonna be the run, but I can hear a zombie nearby, so I'm already getting into like alert mode. So the good news is I can hear some lava through one of these walls. I'm gonna be super careful about it. Yeah, this is a big old pit of lava. One of the biggest ones. Oh, and there's diamonds here too. Yes, please. Let's go get those diamonds now, or that diamond. I'm hoping it's multiple di- Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> my hopes are correct, it seems. Pro tip, when mining diamonds, you know, it takes four seconds to be cautious, and it takes one second to lose your diamond to the lava, because you- <laughs> Just like that, as you can- <laughs> See, really, I lost that diamond to teach you a valuable lesson. So there's a skeleton jumping around just above the base, dying somewhere, I don't know why, don't know how. So yeah, for now I'm gonna wait until daytime comes so I know the skeleton will die and in the meantime just get all the coal and iron and, you know, stuff I'll need for later anyway. So I actually mined enough obsidian to make two nether portals just so if I need to, you know, panically tunnel my way out or, you know, whatever the case may be, maybe I want to make a second portal nearer the uh, blaze spawners. Just, I need to have that flexibility. So just keep in mind that as we do this, there is a solid chance we're just gonna die the moment we walk through the portal or if we spawn over a gap like this, Okay, we're going back. We're going back right now, apparently. So you can see what a horrific spawn that is. Okay, so we're gonna try this one again now, and we're gonna see if we get maybe marginally better results than staring into a ghast floating above nothing. Definitely not the same portal. It's, it's the exact same portal, I think. But yeah, my basic plan now is to make a really safe cobblestone tunnel where nothing can see me until we find the nearest never fortress. Oh gosh. Oh god, okay. <laughs> the noises are still happening. Okay, so mining through the little island here has taken us most of the way to this thing. I'm gonna now take it to 100%. Again, making sure it's a solid passageway on both sides. Oh, I hear it with a skeleton somewhere around there. Okay, oh god, okay. Oh, I forgot regular skeletons can spawn in there too, so we've got two nightmares to face. So yeah, I've actually placed myself uh, a little door here just to make it absolutely safe, you know, sterile in and out. It's interesting because I don't see any exposed blazes. I've seen a bunch of wither skeletons now, but not a single blaze to follow up on it. So there we go. That's how we're going to get blaze rods. One by one, we're going to have to hard scope. Easy. Oh, no, mind. Easy. Uh, peasy. I'm just trying to say. Okay, there we go. Two blaze rods down. Oh, they can see me. That was a direct look in the face. Yeah, standing near this for longer is just causing more and more blazes to spawn. Apparently that is not a good solution. So yeah, they're definitely spawning in faster than I can kill them with this absurd method, which means getting those blaze rods is going to be more of a challenge than anything else. Yeah, my plan here is just to keep hopping in and out of its vision until we kill it. Okay, so I think one of the blaze rods has gone missing at the very least. Oh gosh, okay, so there's a blaze. Okay, so that's two blaze rods. But even touching blazes is nothing that can kill you. Also, this is a much smart strategy. I don't know why I didn't do this from the start. So at this point, we just have so many blazes spawning that they're even falling into places like this that I plan to use for myself later. Again, I know there's efficient ways to do this and work it out, but my brain is unable to function under the stress of like, you die, the last two and a half hours or so of progress on this world have been lost. Yes, I'm done with the never, and it looks like I won't even die in the process. So I actually forgot just how much of a challenge it was to get from the fortress to my portal. And given there's a ghast looking at me right now, it looks like this might stay a challenge. I'm just gonna sprint there, not gonna focus on anything, but getting to that portal alive. Okay, so that ghast is just gonna stay there forever, it seems. Maybe he won't fire at me. If he does, there's very little maneuver room to get away from it. Okay, I'm running, I'm running, I'm making the- Oh gosh, please don't kill me, please don't. Okay, I'm alive. I'm alive! Thank god. So yeah, uh, Enderman can pick up dirt below you, which can make you unsafe. Enderman can pick up grass, even. Enderman can pick up TNT, never so many different blocks. And the plan is, if you want to kill an Enderman, 
to make sure that he can't pick up the blocks you use to make yourself safe from him. So in most of these challenges that I've done so far, getting the Enderman killed is usually part of the slog. Like, oh yeah, you just grind over and over and over again, and then eventually you've killed your Enderman. It's kind of done. It's not necessarily uh, unchallenging, but it's pretty easy once you get the hang of things. However, in this run, we have to watch out for so many factors at the same time. First of all, there's the fact that obviously Enderman can kill me one hit. I mean, it's not too many hits on hard difficulty normally, but it's one hit for me regardless. But we also have to look for these Endermen while avoiding skeletons. If a skeleton even aggros on me for a second, fires one arrow, it's instantly over. Oh, we found an Enderman just while talking about them. But uh, if one skeleton fires one arrow, it's over. On hard difficulty, they're even more accurate than normal, which makes it even harder. So there's that added to the part. What is he doing, by the way? Uh, there's that added to the part. Then there's phantoms, which are a new thing, obviously, in the current version of the game. Uh, I mean, they're not that new, but like they're newish. And uh, yeah, that makes for a real mess. And the only way to really safely do this is to have an entirely safe fort where you know there's no way an enemy can do it. And although stairs is being a bit too paranoid, there are other blocks anyone can't see. It's just, you know, it's worth being safe rather than being sorry. Look directly at him even though, oh God. Even though like that. And yeah, we can now hit him through these barriers, but he can't hit me. So yeah, it's a handy little safety measure in my opinion. I'm not sure if words can correctly describe the fear in my heart. Yes, an ender pearl. Uh, while doing this. Because you have no idea how the tiniest of mistakes immediately wipe out two hours. And like, again, even just playing for fun with half a heart feels bad. But what I, uh, you know, what I think is gonna be the hardest bit is just getting these 12 kills or 11 kills from now on, uh, on Enderman. Maybe slightly less when we find the stronghold, but still. Okay, so I've got one eye offender and on bedrock at least the odds of it breaking are fairly low. So we're just gonna fire it and then go like, I don't know, 500, 1000 blocks in that direction and see where that takes us. So apparently it is over there, directly south. I just realized this is the second night I've been out without sleeping. I need to sleep tomorrow night. So the one benefit of spending all that time looking for the stronghold was I got myself a lot of cobblestone, which means I have more stairs, or well, I mean, I can make more stairs, which means I'm ready now to take on Enderman and definitely not skeletons, 100% not skeletons. So yeah, now I'm in the situation where I can't get out of here because I aggroed an Enderman. But I think he stopped because he made noises like, oh, I'm whatever, I'm done. Oh, there he is. Okay, so as you can see. Oh, God. That was so close. Okay. Same thing again. We've aggroed him. He's coming after me. I've always wondered why Endermen sometimes just decide they're bored of you halfway through trying to kill you. Is it when they realize they can't get to you, maybe? He teleported into a cave below for some reason. Oh, God. Okay. He's dead. No Enderpearl. Because that is the luck we're on today. Three Endermen in a row. It's been a full hour now with no activity whatsoever. And the reason for that is because I'm getting bad luck with Enderpearl drops. Come on, not a single Enderman. Not, not one. Not, didn't, not even a chance for an Enderpearl tonight. So it's raining tonight and that means I have a couple of choices. One is I could sleep through this night entirely and wait another full Minecraft day. But, you know, I'd rather not do that. There's a lot of time I'm gonna have to sink into this one already. So uh, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna find myself a brand new biome, ideally a desert, or just somewhere new to start searching during the day. Uh, that's also vaguely in the direction that the stronghold should be. Okay, it's been quite some time, but we have another Enderman finally. I am gonna rush into this one because I have learned already that they will teleport away on a second's notice and they just... <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with Endermen sometimes, but their logic seems to be really broken on bedrock. I lost an Enderman. In the time it took me to build that structure, and I speed built that, the Enderman is gone. Okay, we're hopefully gonna be luckier with this one though. Oh, we got an Ender Pearl. Thank you, game. Thank you, game. <laughs> okay, daytime came. I didn't find any more Enderman, but I'm just gonna pray this next Eye Offender just gets me all the way there. Uh, it has to, right? So I'm somewhere roughly on course for it, but we'll see. Oh, this way. Okay, so a couple blocks to the left. Oh no! What the. I swear, every time I have enough end eye offenders and I'm kind of fine with it, they last forever. This run, they don't. Well, guess who's waiting for another 20 plus minutes to find an eye offender? Okay, so I found another thing that's pretty funny on this uh, world right here. As you can see, there's a beach which goes right up into the mountains, but then there's a chest. It's clearly meant to be buried treasure, found just in there. And although buried treasure probably doesn't contain anything too great, I'm just too tempted by the idea of that. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna see what's in the buried treasure. Oh, it's a diamond, it's a heart of the sea, which I really don't think will help me, and a bunch of chain stuff, which is really cool in general. Like, it's nice to have rare equipment, usually, 
But today I don't really need that, so instead I'll just kind of climb away from here. Okay, so I found myself a savanna next to a desert. The awesome thing about these biomes is that they don't rain, which is good for finding endermen, and also they can contain villages, which means if I find one of those, then I'll generally know that it's probably, oh, like that one right there, probably something to do with that eye fender from earlier. Like, there's a really solid chance this is the village above which the stronghold generates. This was a super convenient chest. Oh, here's something kind of cool. It's daytime, but I've still found an enderman in, in the desert. Well, all in all, that was pretty successful. One night, three ender pearls. You know, maybe you should just go to deserts after all. So I've got two eye fenders now, definitely enough to find the stronghold, particularly because I really think that the stronghold is gonna be one of these next two villages, either this village or that village. There's just two next to each other in the rough area. So all I have to do is stand perfectly between the villages and whichever way the eye fender points me, I'll be almost certain that's the correct one. So, okay, well, that way it is, I guess. So even though I'm about 90% certain the stronghold's gonna be found beneath this village, you know, I just do a little bit of digging and I'll find it, just to be sure, because, you know, there's a lot of desert this way still, uh, and I've been sure a few times before, I'm gonna go a little bit further this way, and we're gonna throw the same eye fender. Oh, it's definitely this village right here. Like, either that or it's somewhere between this village and the- Oh, that was the most wasteful eye fender I've ever used, apparently. It seems as though I've stumbled across some part of the stronghold, but I can hear a skeletons rumbling around in there, so I do not want to go inside it just yet. Oh, so, did- Okay, so I was, uh, watching something. Maybe you heard the noise there. I withstood a hit. Everything took a little bit of damage. The skeleton hit me dead on, and I took no damage. Because there can be mobs in any room. You have to kind of, like, check clear, check clear. It's like we're sieging a house in real life where you die from one bullet, except we die from one arrow. Honestly, the stronghold destruction I recently did gave me a lot better insight into how these things tend to work. And yeah, I'm ready to do this now. So, diamond sword on the ready. Silfish can kill me, so <laughs> I have to be just as scared of them as any other mob. And I have to be ready to take this thing out and clear the room as fast as I can. But we have now found the end portal room. I'm excited to see how many poles it has inside. Please be more than one. Oh, it's yeah, none. It's ex Okay, zero. That means that's statistically worse luck than average. However, there's one more thing I do want to find in this place, and that is the library. If the library contains a looting uh, enchanted book, which, I mean, it's not that far off an odd. It's like, you know, one in ten chance for four separate chances. We've, we've got a... it's slightly less. But, you know, we've got really uh, fair odds of finding looting on a sword, whether it's one, two, or three. And honestly... or looting in a book we can put on a sword. And honestly, if we can find looting, my life gets uh, a little bit safer, so it's worth going for. Okay, so I'm going to be super cautious of this library. It's one of the few places in the game where cobwebs naturally spawn. And if there's a mob in here, and I run into a cobweb, then you better believe I'm dying to that mob. Okay, come on, chest. Okay, impaling. That's a, that's a nice one. Wait, impaling is for... Oh, it's for the trident. And then power. So impaling, projectile protection, flame. Okay, so here's the second library. Uh, it looks a little bit different to the first one, but same thing goes here. Find the chest, pray the chest has some good things in. Oh, it's reflected, that's why. Infinity, really good for a bow, defeats the point of all these arrows I'm otherwise getting. And mending and lure. We got mending twice, jeez. That's good luck. I'm breaking and mending such a solid book. This is the best thing for a sword. Entirely worthless to me though, because it's a speed run. This is pretty good for a piece of armor or a fishing rod. Entirely worthless to me though. And this is really good for a bow. So interestingly enough, at least in my opinion, I actually have all the things I now require for an enchantment table. And given we didn't get any good books, so we can't use an anvil to do it, we might as well just enchant some stuff on a base level. Because, I mean, it's not perfect anymore, but if we put protection on there, then it might save us potentially in some edge case again. Oh, we don't have lapis. I guess no enchanting for me then. Okay, so we've got ourselves some more gunpowder. Always good. Some more iron. Maybe good. Oh, knock back and fire aspect. I swear, if we just find looting in one of these chests, I'll be so unbelievably happy. Many, many hours later, I now have all of the ender pearls I need to make, all of the IF enders I need, 
assuming I don't accidentally throw one away on the way to the stronghold. And now I am ready to do this. I am ready for the big fight, at least in spirit. I mean, on a technical level, I can go and do it. I mean, I've got a horse, I've got the this, I've got the that. And uh, given that I have half a heart, that's my whole gimmick today. I think uh, taking a risk on this dragon after all of that would be a bit absurd. You know, starting again from scratch all these hours later is not a very productive way to do this. And it's also just, I mean, it'd be personally painful to lose after all this time. So I feel like the best strategy is to be prepared for this. And one of the best ways to do that, I've been collecting some wood already, but to collect a lot more wood. And you're going to see why when we get into this, because I think this might be the easiest end fight yet in the series. But again, let's, let's see if it works out first, then let's brag about how effective it is. So for the record, this Enderman hunt has been the least pleasant of the series so far. I always put the Enderman hunt, you know, killing Enderman night after night, as being one of the least enjoyable parts of the Minecraft's, you know, race to the end dragon, because there's no real control over it. Sometimes you can go an entire hour without encountering an Enderman, and there's not much you can do about that. We've got a fair chance of this. Oh, okay, there's a drowned in there. Okay. I'm genuinely super nervous that just walking through the stronghold, we might run into something. Like, I'll admit, I would see the humor in it if all of a sudden, like, I got killed in the stronghold. It's like, yeah, there goes 10 hours of uh, <laughs> gameplay or whatever. Uh, but, you know, the other part of me is like, no, if I'm doing this, I want to... Oh, I've lost the way through the stronghold. Okay, I'm here and I'm nervous, but let's do this. Let's get the big moment going off. So, uh, for this run, just be informed, I'm going to turn down the volume of the game severely for the End Dragon fight. End Dragon in Minecraft is super, super loud, so you'll hear everything be a little bit quiet. That's not the game being broken or something. It's just me trying to avoid the dragon's endless roars, making me go deaf, which, uh, personally, I'm not a fan of. So, let's jump in. Let's do this, I guess. Again, I'm somewhat confident, but like actually jumping in makes me a lot less confident. And our first move, you might think, is to go straight to the end island where the dragon's actually at. But my actual plan is to go as far out this way as we can to get away from the end dragon as fast as possible. Because the dragon can only hit you from a certain distance away. So if you're far enough away, then you're outside the end dragon's kind of like catchment zone, let's call it. But, but another option you have is to go all the way out to the end here and uh, to instead... Uh, just kind of build a bridge all the way to the end island. So this is a process that takes l way longer than you'd assume. It's roughly a thousand blocks we're gonna have to travel. That's why we need so much wood uh, to go to one of these outlying islands, which seems like a, a weird investment of time. Like you're gonna, you know, spend a solid few minutes now just to get all the way from the end to the end islands. But it's gonna be super useful for allowing us to beat the dragon a lot easier. And just like that, you can start to see the uh, end islands at the very least starting to be visible. Okay, so here's where I have to be extra, extra careful to look towards the ground because there's endermen everywhere and one of them could end the run in a kind of amusing way. But my other option, and this is the one I'm going to go with, I think, because armor means nothing in this run, is just to put a car pumpkin on. Again, it looks kind of silly. Uh, it's a little bit ridiculous. But this is the strategy right now. We can look all the endermen in the face all we like and yeah. Again, we're, it, since we're only looking out for end cities, which are pretty distinctive, it should work for, for now at least. Okay, so I see what appears to be an end city. I don't know if it has an end ship yet, because we can't quite see, but it might do. So we'll go over there regardless. So here's the deal. I kind of just assumed we'd find an end city by now, or an end ship by now, at the very least. And uh, it kind of hasn't happened. I've pretty much run out of blocks. It's been something like half an hour, and we just haven't found anything. This is one of the fun... Uh, you know, quirks of Minecraft being randomly generated is, uh, you know, sometimes everything works out and sometimes the opposite happens and you're kind of stranded on an end island. Okay, so before my wood fully runs out, what I'm going to make is I'm going to make a bow because I'm hope that's going to be uh, useful at the very least. And I'm going to make arrows. Arrows require sticks and sticks require wood. So it's important that before I use up all the uh, things, I just get that made right now. Make sure it's out of the way. It seems as though my strategy of just praying that I would eventually find one has worked. As you can see, very valid. Would recommend to a friend. So this is an absurd strategy, my plan is genuinely just to place a bunch of blocks, then look up, keep an ear out for any shulker noises, and then see how well that works out for me. So the Elytra is found at the very front of the ship, underneath it, so if we mine that up from exactly here, that's where we want to be. So if we want thorns and protection and I'm breaking, I mean, I'm, I guess we might as well take it, like if the game's offering me thorn leggings, maybe it saves my life in a backup situation. Yeah. This is such a simple operation, but I'm just so terrified of making it. But, okay, let's go. Go, 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 go. So I'm not sure if the Elytra even fell on this side. I don't think it did. No, the Elytra fell on the- Oh, God, okay. Okay, this works, this works, this works, apparently. He can't hit me, he can't attack me. I can attack him, he's dead, okay. <sighs> Do not want to die to a Shulker. Haven't ever tried uh, fighting a Shulker without taking damage. 
Didn't want this to be the first time. Oh no, I don't have enough for a crafting table, which I need to make fireworks. Uh, and no, I need to make sugar, which I need, uh, sorry, to make paper to make fireworks. So I guess we're going on a road trip, following my old path back. Oh, so put this back on. But yeah, the reason I've been collecting gunpowder this whole time, the reason I've been collecting, uh, you know, sugar cane this whole time, maybe you spied that, was because I intended to make some fireworks just like this. So the interesting thing here is I'm not sure if the Elytra will last all of the way on the journey back home if I fly the entire way. So, oh, so this is the first, okay, so I'm gonna, if you look at my Elytra use, it's already gone down by about 10%. I wanna save this for the fight, so I'm actually gonna take a walk back, which seems counterintuitive, but for this case, it won't be. So it's a pretty long run back, and it's kind of funny just walking past so many Endermen, because they just spawn anywhere they can, including these half slabs. Okay, so here comes the moment of truth, and I think rather than, uh, you know, slowly doing this in the way that seems most natural, I think we want to just rush into it. I think we want to just, like, you know, let's lead by example. Let's fly up, let's fly in, let's get our TNT planted, let's get the hardest ones down. Oh, wait, maybe let's get here. Oh, okay. That was, <laughs> almost got hit by the dragon. Maybe we should do the, the easy ones first, actually. You know, that does seem easy enough to do. Okay, so the dragon's back in the center. This is my really only time to shine and try one more little run here. Land on top of the fence post. Oh man, didn't take damage. Get off, I'm out. Okay, please tell me that actually worked. Please tell me it did. I'm not seeing it, I'm not seeing it. Okay, it's done. The second cage is done. The fight is a lot easier now. Okay, okay, we can do this. We can do this, I say before not doing this. Oh, I did it! <laughs> okay, so now we've got all the towers down. It's just about, can we kill the dragon before the dragon kills us? It hurts our long-term vision and we might miss the dragon because of it, but it should- Oh god, I don't know how I survived that. I don't know if I even should have taken damage. I swear that was three blocks, but somehow, feather falling, I'm not even sure. I'm not even gonna question it just yet. We'll come back to this later, but I am going and I'm doing this um, because that is bizarre stuff. If I, if it wasn't legitimate, just again, because there's going to be the one person who's like, aha, I've caught Soy Cat doing something, I'm not sure what you're going to assume. If it wasn't legitimate, I wouldn't leave it in the run. I'm leaving that in the run because I want you to know that it is a rare chance, maybe, I'm not sure how rare, like maybe half the time, maybe 30% of the time, maybe less or more than that. Okay, dragon's in the center again. I have to be so, so, so careful not to take any damage anywhere. And then let's do this. It has happened. Wait, as of now. It has happened! We beat the dragon, no damage taken, or two hits taken that weren't happy. You know, there's a whole confusing thing in that we'll have to dive into. But just like that, dragon is defeated, and oh, I guess, actually, wait. Just so we're not too smug, now we have officially, as of this, beaten Minecraft without taking any damage whatsoever. Um, that is a very, very complicated, insane, time consuming, painful run. I do have to say right now that this is one of the hardest just in terms of how much it demanded from me uh, runs and it's also hardest in terms of like how much I uh, have been like scared of like in terms of maybe luck too. I'm, I'm not sure. This is this is an insane moment. It's all come together and I am so happy to say that yeah we did it. We did it. We did it. Yeah. <laughs> so we have beaten Minecraft with half a heart from the start to the finish, we took no damage within the game, or at least no measurable damage. I'm sure those two hits, because in case you're curious, like, aha, there's something about that. Again, I, for full transparency, I'll leave the hits in there. You can see them, you can see uh, my armor's taking some damage, all that sort of stuff. But that is uh, what I believe it is, is it's a uh, chance in Minecraft. When you have armor, when there are, you know, like tiny amounts of damage, instead of being like a, you know, binary, like, oh, this does a, a third of a heart of damage, or this does a, you know, like a 16th of a heart of damage, it does the hit animation, but it doesn't take away from your actual thing. So I don't believe we took damage in today's stream. You can confirm for yourself, do a few tests. The skeleton hit on hard with iron armor will sometimes kill you, sometimes not. I'm still not sure the whole thing's about it. The mechanics of Minecraft are confusing, but we beat Minecraft with no damage. And this is one of those goals I've had for the longest time as like, a, that would be cool. But I've always realized that some point along the way, I'm gonna die. Uh, you know, because I've tried it a few times on streams. I tried it five times today before the successful sixth run. 
It's been a long one, it's been a crazy one. So I do have one actual thing though, I would like to confess before we finish the video. And that is the fact that as you can see right here, it is the 4th of December as I finally finished this run. It was the 28th of November when I began it. I started the run and then I got about halfway through off the first Enderman and I was like, this is just killing my heart too much to do it. And then a few days ago, I did half of the Enderman and then today I did the last half and the end of the game because doing this, trying to beat Minecraft with only half a heart, or you know, with only half a heart there, taking no damage whatsoever, it increases your paranoia to a level where it's not necessarily perfectly fun to play Minecraft. I, although lots of my challenges are like fun ways to beat the game in a more interesting way, this is a way to, you know, die at 27 from all the stress or something. Like, it's great for your heartbeat, it's great for burning calories or whatever, I'm sure that has to be true. But in terms of, is this a fun challenge I recommend? No. The whole, uh, I, I love these challenges, uh, all the other ones in the playlist that again, you can check down below because trying to beat Minecraft without crafting or whatever, it was like a challenge on a mental level we could overcome. This was a challenge in how much can you pay attention to everything and hope something bad doesn't happen. A lot of the first few times it was like, oh, that made a mistake, didn't assume every single mental possibility. And I'm sure this run, we got a few moments of luck in there, but it is a thing that we did in around, I don't even know how long the gameplay was, like something like 10 hours total. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff that had to go down. Killing Endermen is so stressful normally. Killing them like this, so much more stressful. There's just a lot of things in Minecraft that are so much harder when you have half heart. So I don't recommend this run. And I won't be doing any more like, oh, it's a toy cat. Now you beat Minecraft only half a heart. Now try beat Minecraft with half a heart and only one hand or whatever. Like, doing things that are mechanically difficult. Not only is it hard on, like, you know, at least for me, maybe, maybe I'm a bad personality type, but also, if you if you check the comments, even though I've been 100% transparent about everything, there's gonna be someone who's like, it's a fake. There's literally gameplay you can check to see it, that you can literally check everything that happened in this run, even those weird, uh, you know, like, almost damages, but not damage things. You can check them and see if they're real, but someone's gonna be like, it's a fake, whereas at least the other runs, even if you wanna say it's a fake, which, you know, if you wanna believe that, that's fine. I'm an evil uh, <laughs> YouTube, uh, you know, guy who's trying to take your money by pretending to do Minecraft runs, but going through lots of effort to fake them or whatever. Oh, also, by the way, just in case you're curious, just see one more time. There is no, uh, like, message saying this world was made in creative or this is this is that or that. There's achievements, there's everything else. It's a legit world. <laughs> it's a legit everything. But, um, yeah, enough people aren't going to believe that. So, because of that, I just want to say, yeah, we'll stick to runs for now that are uh, challenging on, like, uh, can you actually do that at all? So hopefully you understand. If you want to suggest a challenge, leave it in the comments down below. But don't suggest something that will uh, make me die at 25 instead of whatever age I'm going to live to. Anyway, with that said, I rambled enough at the end here. Thank you so much for watching this video uh, and supporting the channel and making things like this possible. Um, sometimes I, I really regret starting a challenge. And in this case, I have felt that all week. It's been looming over me. But having done it now, it's a cool thing to say you've done Minecraft like that. Like, some people are like, yeah, I don't know if I could ever do that. Give it a try. Even if you die, even if you fail, it's still an interesting time. It's still an interesting story. It's still an interesting everything else. And I just, I wholeheartedly recommend it for that purpose. So yeah, thank you very much for watching today's Minecraft video. And I guess what we're going to do now is, actually, wait, just in case, we're going to run away from that. But yeah, I guess what we're going to do now is use some of the TNT we didn't and make a nice bit of explosion. So thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video. Uh, hopefully, because I make videos every day, not just challenge videos. A lot of other ones too. That you can say, <laughs> okay, I actually did die at the end. <laughs> see that that that's that just goes to show. You can <laughs> thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.